today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, shooting with Fuji um, files, uh, but it really applies to, to any camera system. When you're used to one camera system and you switch to another one, uh, things tend to work a little bit different and, and look a little bit different in Lightroom. Uh, so I want to talk specifically about Fuji uh, today though. The question comes from Mark Connors. He says, I'm loving my new Fuji X X-T2, but I find that the X-Trans files are a bit trickier to work with in Lightroom. I find sometimes presets don't look right when first applied. Would you mind talking about this on one of your podcasts? Well, no, I wouldn't because here <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, so when I first switched from Canon to Nikon years ago, for six months after that, I regretted my decision because I could never get the files to look right. It was just driving me crazy until another photographer who had made a similar switch before just told me to relax and just get used to the fact that they're not going to look the same and to start appreciating the things you do like in the files. Every file from a different camera system looks a little different. And when you've been looking at one for years, it just just it's just strange when you're looking at a different one. Have you guys experienced this? Oh my gosh. Yes. It's, it's kind of crazy, right? How different cameras are. You wouldn't expect that until you do it, but I did the same thing. I switched from Canon to Nikon and you're right. The, it was the dynamic range, um, you know, like was so different on the Nikon and it took me a long time to get used to it as well. Yeah. I, I've always been a Canon shooter, but I also this past year bought a little, portable Sony that I can bring around with me and the files on that just I I like the way that they look but they definitely come out looking different like I almost feel like I don't need to process them mm -hmm. and that's something that is interesting to me uh -huh. <laughs> but it, you know the, oftentimes Canon's files look very flat and you really have to boost the contrast on them and the Sony ones that I've gotten they just come off looking contrasty and beautiful um so that's one thing that I would say is different, but it's been a pleasant difference for me. <laughs> yeah, from what I've seen looking at the different ones, the Sony RAW files tend to look just the most polished straight out of the gate in Lightroom. Just open it up and they tend to look more polished than the others. I would probably put Canon um, next. and Well, or Fuji as very similar. A Fuji file really it looks pretty similar to a Canon, but maybe a little bit less than a Canon. Uh, so Fuji and then Nikon. Nikon files in Lightroom look super raw when you first open them. They look just flat and lacking contrast and lacking sharpness. Um, mm -hmm. And and they're I, I amazing had, had files, but they don't start that way. <laughs> I felt the opposite. I thought that my Nikon was punchier and sharper. Than your Canon? Yeah, so I went from the Canon 5D Mark III to the D750. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, hey, the exact opposite. Well, this is I what I'm talking about. Everybody sees something different with them. <laughs> or maybe it's not uh, uh, models or, excuse me, manufacturers. It's models of cameras could be different too the product that you're getting based on the year, the sensor that was used in it. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah, everybody's going to deal with this anytime you change. So specific to Fuji, um, the most, the biggest complaint is that when you open these files up, that a lot of the little fine details just feel a little grayed out, a little mushy, a little bit soft um, in those details. And I can assure you that that is just the way the file is opening up in Lightroom. Uh, you can absolutely uh, add sharpening without messing up uh, the file. You can add actually quite a bit of sharpening uh, to, uh, to a Fuji file and you'll see, oh, we got detail in there. We're just not getting uh, that contrast around the edges that we normally have to, to kind of show it off. Uh, but the Fuji lenses are, are generally very good. Um, and so it, it, it shoots very sharp. Uh, it's just a, a matter of kind of getting used to the fact that you're going to need to add more sharpening, especially the detail slider, than you normally would. Um, and if it does mess up any areas, of course, you can just add a little bit of masking um, in the in Lightroom as well to get rid of that. Masking is the little slider in the sharpening panel that basically just says if anything doesn't have enough of an edge, 
just don't sharpen that. You know, if I, like if I were up, if I applied a lot of sharpening to a face, it's going to make my hair really, it's going to look like I'm on Good Morning America. Have you guys seen Good Morning America? <laughs> they put way too much sharpening on their images. Their hair just looks crunchy. Anyway. It really does. Oh man. I, I laugh every time I watch Good Morning America because it's so, so sharp, true. way over sharpened. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, uh, if, if you're getting that look, it might, you might want that in the hair or fine detail in weeds or in rocks, but if it's doing it to the sky or the skin, um, where it's more of a flat area, that's what masking is for. And so I find you need to add more sharpening to a Fuji file, especially that detail slider, um, than you, than you normally would. Uh, it's just one of the, the differences in the file. It doesn't mean the file is any, any better or any worse. It's just... A difference in, in how it's shown in Lightroom. Um, okay, so um, next, uh, a Fuji file is actually, I, I find that a Fuji file has excellent, excellent color, um, much better than the Nikons. Um, Nikon, I, I really have always had trouble getting greens to look just right in um in a nikon and the perfect example to me is every time i go shoot in the columbia river gorge in oregon uh, or anywhere there's a lot of like vibrant green moss and stuff iceland it just doesn't it looks very lifeless and dead and i could it, it's tough to just tw i can't quite tweak it in lightroom to look right and canon tends to get those green that green moss just right have you guys found that have you had any problem with that well, I can't speak to Fuji, uh, but I can say that, for instance, the Sony cameras, like skin tones, always look so great, uh, fresh mm. out of camera. Yep. Um, so I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Fuji yeah. usually does really well with skin tones as well. Yeah. And as far as being a Canon shooter, I, I haven't noticed that Moss looks very green because I don't exactly shoot Moss ever. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of Moss in your portraits and commercial work. <laughs> yeah, not so um, much. I don't, no. I don't get a lot of Moss in the studio. I want to go do a test now. <laughs> 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 anyway, whenever I go there, but Fuji actually does really well with with the moss in Oregon. But boy, Nikon, it, I'm I'm telling you, go shoot a Canon and a Nikon of that vibrant green moss like in Oregon that's covering it, covering everything. It, it just does not look quite right. Anyway, Fuji usually does pretty well um, with colors. However, even though the color I find to be pretty accurately recorded with uh, skin tones and greens, things like that, I do see problems with the color just not feeling as punchy um, and this is where i think most people get frustrated no matter what camera system you're on is that you see the back of the camera and you're like that looks great and then you take it into lightroom and it does not look great <laughs> um, it, in fact a lot of times it, you'll open the image up in lightroom and the second you you flip to it, it looks good for a second. And then it, when it finally loads, ah, it doesn't look right anymore. Um, and that is because of your camera calibration. So if you go into the develop module, go into camera calibration, um, it, by default, it's going to, unless you're shooting a DNG, um, like if you're shooting a DJI Phantom or uh, Sony's, they're going to have, uh, they're going to be DNG. And so your profile is going to be embedded. Uh, but uh, if you're shooting a Canon Nikon or a Fuji, um, then you're going to have all different profiles here that these are, these are Adobe's way of trying to mimic the different styles in your camera. And so it's not going to be exact, but it should be reasonably close. So if I um, take an image and I just put it in Adobe, Adobe standard, and then I switch that camera profile, you know, like if it's a landscape, choose something like maybe camera Velvia, uh, and you'll see it's going to look almost identical to what it is that you were um, that you were seeing on the back of your camera, and then you can make changes from there. Um, so if 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 it's annoying you that you aren't getting what's on the back of your camera, that's a almost a complete fix to it. Again, that doesn't really make the file any better, and you can just make changes to your sliders, and you can get it uh, just as good as if you don't set the camera calibration at all um, to one of the presets. But uh, if that's your frustration, that's a way to fix it. Do you guys mess with the camera calibration much? 
Go ahead, that slider in Lightroom? I I definitely don't at all. Um, yeah, I, I've messed with the profiles a little bit um, right when I first got my color checker, but after that, I, I haven't. I was going to say, all. I feel like I'm in such a routine where I just kind of do the same thing over and over again, and that's not part of it. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I, I For a while there, I got really interested with it, especially as I was crafting new Lightroom presets. I wanted to see what was possible in there. Um, and and there are definitely some interesting things you can do just by moving those sliders around. As far as those pri profiles, though, I'm with you guys. I really don't don't go in there hardly ever. Uh, I certainly don't to choose a different one. I just kind of stick with the Adobe standard. It looks ugly when you get it. It looks really great out in that Adobe standard. I kind of like that it looks great out at the beginning because then it helps me to see what detail is there and then I can pull it out and add contrast and whatever. Uh, so it just depends how you want to work. Uh, but if you're having trouble getting back to the way the camera looks, that's a really easy and quick, uh, quick, quick fix for, for getting to that point. So, uh, you know, Fuji files are not crazy different. I think some people kind of overblow the difference in in uh, how the the Fuji raw files are going to work compared to anything else. Just like any camera brand, they're just differences. And unless you're you've been shooting Fuji for a long time and you're really used to what those files are look like, things are just going to be weird, maybe even for 6 months. Um and and then things will be normal. Um I, I disagree. I, I hear frequently that uh, that a reason not to choose Fuji uh, is because uh, the it doesn't work well with Lightroom. And I always think, how so? What doesn't work well in Lightroom? Uh, it works great. Uh, it's just different. Like every camera is, it looks different. Um, and like with every camera, there are workarounds to make it look the way that you want it to. So that's a little bit about Fuji Raw.